Welcome to the Rest is History question episode. Well, what? History. Did I say history? History. Again? I've just been listening to it. I've just been listening <laughs> to the Rest is History. On the... That's mad how it gets into your head, doesn't it? That's the... oh, silly old. Right, okay. <laughs> Keep that intro in. Keep it... <laughs> that is brilliant. That would be class. Oh. You just said what we were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear uh, let's have another go <laughs> welcome to the rest is football uh, with me Gary Lika, Alan Shearer and Micah Richards um, it's the question episode and um, I've got a good place to start actually um, for what I'll explain are obvious reasons because I've, we've got a, actually a number of questions from a certain Danny Baker mm -hmm. who um, is one of the reasons that um, we're, we're doing this podcast now um, because it's how Goalhanger, uh, our business, um, started getting into podcast. Uh, I used to do one with, with Danny. Um, it was kind of a, a fan and footballer podcast called Behind Closed Doors. It's the first uh, time we ventured into the, the genre and we started to think there's something in this um, podcast game. And here we are, I don't know, it must be seven years later. Um, we're still doing podcasts <laughs> um, and, and lots of them, including, of course, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, you um, stupid right, old He has asked, a, a, it, <laughs> this is very, very typically Danny Baker in the amount of questions he's asked and um, in the way that they're asked. Have you ever had a parking nightmare before a game? I think that's quite quickly. Well, you normally I arrive on a team bus, it, although in the home games in, I don't know about you, but in our day, you used to drive to the to the ground yourself. I still think they do it in some teams with home games, but you're in the car park, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> or have any of you never been allowed in a car park? No, we, uh, we used to uh, we used to drive quite a bit to the uh, to the home games, but as you know, with my timing, I was always petrified. Can you imagine? Can't, I'm sorry, I'm I'm late. <laughs> How early did you get to the ground, Al? Oh, if we were, if we were meeting at um, half one, I would be there at half twelve. <laughs> I would, would I would be. I couldn't, uh, it, or whatever it was, or if we, it, it, I just couldn't bring myself can you imagine being late for a match no <laughs> I, I used to have a recurring dream that i couldn't get all my shin pads on and my boots on in time um to get out onto the pitch <laughs> i don't know what that says some therapist some therapy person will sort of sort that out for me during a match are you aware that you're on the telly Ooh, good question that isn't it he asks good questions no um, you're not aware you just well you know you're on the telly mm. but you're not thinking oh is my hair on <laughs> well Mike <Micah> might be <laughs> <laughs> here you go when was the first time you were on the telly Ooh. mine was match of the day I think I was about 19 I'd broken into the Leicester team it was at Villa Park which is my bogey ground I never scored out my whole career there or won a game there, with the exception of Everton semi-final in the FA Cup when I was injured and missed it. Um, and on match of the day that night, I missed an absolute sitter, knocked it over the bar Did from you? about four yards <laughs> out. Yeah, got hammered by my family. Who, who was the pundit? Oh, the pundits then. Oh, crikey, Do you remember? I can't, I can't. This, this is like a <laughs> lifetime ago. More than a lifetime. This is, this this is, is back in 1934, Mike. How the f <laughs> are you going to remember that? Match of the Day didn't start to 1964, <laughs> so everyone knows you're lying. <laughs> when was it, what, do you remember the first time you were on the telly? Was there Ooh. anything pre football? Yeah, there was a. I was the ball boy for Kevin Keegan's yeah. testimonial at um, at St James's Park. I don't know whether you remember. You probably won't. But he actually no. flew away in a helicopter. Helicopter came down, picked him yeah. up, and away. And I was the one of the ball boys. You the, were the helicopter driver. <laughs> I wish, yeah. Pilot. Even. And um, <laughs> and I remember. There's, there's still got the little footage now where I'm chasing the Kevin Keegan around the pitch when he's saying his goodbyes. And I remember going home and seeing it the next day on uh, on television. There I on television I can't that believe it brilliant. Yeah. I remember it Mikey you'll know uh, when were you first on no I don't I mean, I mean it was football but I mean probably crime watch was always <laughs> <laughs> Chapel Town was always on crime watch uh... <laughs> uh, I would have been in a distance somewhere but yeah <laughs> next one the nightmare of friends or relatives asking for tickets. I mean, that's always been. It's an absolute nightmare. There's, there's many nightmares you can have with tickets because what happens is basically on the day, you get into the first team 
and so many people want to come and mm. you get so much free and the rest you have to buy and buying for families okay as we know but i remember and you two might not remember this gary and alan probably for your son gary uh harry there was a thing Harry's called here, right beside me, was, producer Harry. Yeah. <laughs> producer Harry. There was a thing called MSN. So there was MySpace and and MSN and Facebook. And, He's nodding, and it was on one of those <laughs> platforms anyway. So that's messages, Gary. In case you didn't know. <laughs> <Cop. laughs> <laughs> you said it, you silly old fool. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, on these platforms or whatever you're doing, you can get friend requests. So I get a, a friend request from someone, I think the name was, she was called Maria Suarez. And she was- Maria Suarez? Yeah, Ma Maria Suarez, something like that. Something exotic, well, you know, it's exotic name, Maria Suarez. So anyway, I get a, a message request from this Maria Suarez. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I'll accept that. <laughs> so we get talking where are you from blah de, blah de, blah I think she said Spain but she was over in England this that and the other she said um, as it goes I'm a Manchester City fan so I'm thinking oh this is fantastic <laughs> I'm, I'm, back, I'm back then Man City weren't great so I'm thinking mm, is someone having me over here but she said I'd like to come to the game so I'll buy her two tickets because I've given mm. all my tickets to my family yeah. And I get a two players lounge tickets. You're a smoothie on your mic. That's so taking a big chance. You though. know how to rock and roll, don't you? <laughs> were you, were you catfish, Micah? <laughs> Tell me you were catfish. <laughs> so, so after the game, and you know, you know when I don't want to say you know when someone you like comes to the game, you know, a partner, whatever that may be. You're doing the most out here. You're doing skills. I got man of the match in that game. <laughs> I was on fire. So back in them days, you had a suit on. I was dressed to the nines, club suit. I pop into the um, to the players lounge. You know, you, you're looking around and whatnot. And I'm thinking, I can't see it anywhere. Can't see it anywhere. So I'm thinking, all right, I'll, I'll wait on. 10 minutes goes by. Half an hour goes by, an hour goes by. <laughs> I've I've logged on to the MSN, and she's only gone and blocked me. She thought you played. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, what is gone on here? So obviously, you speak to the lads. I said, "Oh, does anyone know this girl?" Basically, she asked me for tickets and the players lounge and all that, and I'm not exaggerating. Four of the other lads had the same text from a fake account and she managed to swindle about 10 to 12 tickets and 10 players lounge and some, just till this day, I don't know who swindled us, but it was absolutely fantastic. Oh, it was brilliant. Should we tell him now, guys, it was us or not? <laughs> I think we should keep it from him for a while, Alan. <laughs> Alan, or otherwise known as Maria Suarez. <laughs> How long did it take you to get from the pitch into the players' lounge? Yeah, but you know, you get in and out of the shower like you put, put your best smellies on and everything, didn't you? Oh, my. I was dressed to the nines, Alan. Love Fresh it. haircut, suit, <laughs> shoes, the lot. Man of the match as well. I love it. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to do all Danny's questions because he hogged the whole thing. But there's the, there's one more. It says, "Have you ever lost a medal?" Well, I've only had one, so what, I've, I've still got it. I know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've not I've not got many more. Oh. I've no idea where my Copa del Rey medal is, really, or even if we got a medal or what. I can't even remember. Yeah, you can't remember where your medal is, Gary. What the most prestigious medal? You are well, one of, well, but you one have. Of, well, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, Copa del Rey. I don't know where it is. I don't even know if you got a medal. Well, you need to do your homework and go and find out. And I'm going to find out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, last question from Danny. Is there one miss, one mistake, one decision that still haunts you? Yes. In Brazil, penalty. <laughs> 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 Gary, uh... when you swear, it is 
a beautiful thing, you know? <laughs> I, I think, I mean, I'm not as good as Sweary out, but I, I think sometimes it adds a little bit of emphasis if you don't overuse it. Oh, brilliant. I was trying my very best on Saturday night, you know, I was because I was thinking I was that excited oh. with Newcastle's performance. I was thinking, don't swear, don't swear. This is, this, this is not our podcast. <laughs> one decision, uh, two, there was one decision from a referee, which you know about, Howard Webb. Well, we've spoken about that when I was yes. the, uh, at, at Newcastle. And um, one miss, oh, my penalty miss against Sunderland at St. James's Park in hell. <laughs> As you mentioned uh, Newcastle there, Alan, um, got one here from Dave Singh. Hi, guys. Love the show. I've just moved around the world and listening to all of you makes me feel like I'm back home in the pub chatting football. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Mm -hmm. and thank you for the kind words. And it's a question for you, Alan. Did Alan think he was going to be made permanent Newcastle manager after relegation? Yeah, you did. Absolutely, you? yeah. I was. Um, <laughs> I, I was. I shook hands on a deal. Um, I was told I was going to be the uh, the manager. We agreed everything, and um, with Mike Ashley. Yeah, we'll and we'll be in touch. And um, I'm still waiting for the call. <laughs> <laughs> I got a call about I don't know three or four <laughs> three or four days later to say there's um there's a there's a there's an issue with the bank. We'll be in touch. <laughs> what are we? That was in what 2009. I'm still waiting for that call. <laughs> That's a terrible bank problem. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So um, the answer to that is yes, I did. <laughs> oh, that's superb. Um, got one here from Carl McFerrin. Ajax 95, United 99, Barca 2010, all great teams with a good number of academy players. Will we ever see successful teams with heavy academy influence again in the modern game? I would say possibly mm. the modern, well, the current, I should say, Barcelona side. Again, are producing what? Pedri, Gavi, Yamin Yamal, Balde, the left back is is fantastic, and there was a, Fatty, a, Fatty who's now on loan at Brighton, um, who could obviously return and and do good things. And there was a a new player mm. that played in his debut, didn't he? And came on and scored what in like fifteen seconds. It was, or yeah, something. I saw that. Yes, was it yesterday? Um, was it? Yeah, I think his name was. I don't know how you say it. G U I U. Could be gooey. Mm. Gooey would be brilliant. Way of saying it. I don't. I don't know. It doesn't. Um, it's not obviously a Spanish name, but um, so maybe Barcelona. I think with the infrastructure um, in top flight academies, uh, how things are structured, uh, how they work nowadays, then yeah, I would think that because of what's been spent and will continue to be in, in the top flight academies then they're going to produce more and more and keep on producing so yeah i would i would say so yeah I, i'm not i'm not so sure because there's always era in which mm. you sort of get a golden generation but i just think there's too much money now where when a certain player gets to a certain age one of the big clubs just comes and buys them so I would probably say no. And I suppose with the big clubs as well, even if they've got emerging talent, it's more difficult for them to get breakthrough. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, guys. I think with the amount of money that's in football now, um, a player gets to a certain age, 16, 17, and one of the big clubs comes and just buys them. If you look at someone like Foden, if he didn't have Bernardo Silva or Kevin De Bruyne in front of him, I think we would have seen a lot more of his qualities. So I'm not sure. Uh, one more question before we take a break uh, from John Parkin. I was in the seats in the row behind Big Meeks on the terraces in the West Brom um, end back in 2008. He was supporting his mate Ishmael Miller. Did Gary or Alan ever go to a game uh, where they were in amongst the paying public whilst they were players? What, what's this, Meeks? Who's... Is this true? I, I, I keep telling you, Gary, I'm the man of the people. That's why the people love <laughs> Big Meeks, because they can relate to me. <laughs> I wouldn't want to sit behind you. You wouldn't see the game. <laughs> so it was earlier in my career, and I was good mates with Ishmael Miller. He was an academy graduate. He was a year above me, and he didn't quite make it at Man City. He had a couple of appearances for him. 
But then he got his move to West Brom and was the main man there for a couple of seasons. So one of the games I went to him, he scored. He scored a world. He dribbled past about three people. And I think he slotted it past the goalkeeper. And as it was on Sky, and as the camera panned to Ishmael Miller celebrating, he was coming to celebrate with me. And he just seen me in the crowd giving it all sorts. It was, yeah, it was yeah. brilliant. Maybe that was the first time you're on telly. My, <laughs> my son keeps on at me. He said, Dad, you've got to come into a Newcastle game and stand in the away end. He said, it'll be carnage. It'll be brilliant. You have to do it with me. I said to him, are you mad? Seriously. <laughs> I mean, as good as it sounds, I would love to do it, but I'm not sure I'd see much of the game, are you? I just want to see you there with your shirt on and your belly, and your be- with your belly out and all those Geordies swinging it around. Yeah, uh, that, would, that would be amazing. Brilliant. Um, by the way, Mika, and if you're sitting in the terraces now, if you want to pop off quickly and, and, and beat the queue, um, because we're going to take a half-time break. <laughs> Welcome back to the rest is football um, question time. And we've got a question from Hayley Ween with the recent betting bans we've seen first with Tony and now with Italy internationals, um, including of course, Tonali. I was wondering whether this was something you were aware of happening back when you were playing, or is it something you feel is only worse now due to availability online? Well, I imagine it's a lot worse um, now. Um, although I've had two close friends, um, well-known friends that have um, had terrible, terrible problems um, with with gambling addiction. Um, one of them's no longer with us, my great friend Willie Thorne, um, the snooker player. Um, dreadful mess, dreadful problems all his life with gambling. Um, and the other is Peter Shilton, um, who I know won't mind me mentioning it because he's subsequently done a book about the problems. Uh, which is actually highly recommended if you if you want to read it. I wrote the foreword for it. And he's now trying to do things around, you know, the sponsorship gambling, encouraging youngsters into into that sort of thing as well. Um, in fact, when I, I roomed with him with England, um, it was it was fairly obvious to me that he, he had a problem. He used to kick me out the room in the afternoon so that he could make his bets on the phone as different now, obviously, um, to his bookmaker um, while the horse racing was on. Um, I had to go. So there were occasions I sat in the corridor. Did you, um, did you say anything but, to him, Gary? Or did I, you? No, well, he was very much the senior, you know. It, I was kind of new on the block. I mean, we became very close. We roomed together for six years, um, including two World Cups. Um, but... You know, I didn't know the, the levels of it, and it's probably the, one of the reasons he didn't want me on the room in the room to hear the the levels of his his gambling. Um, and it's great now that he's he's clearly turned the corner and he's beat beat the addiction. And 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 gambling is a tough addiction to beat. I think. I, I, I mean, it's. I think people always think oh, addiction. It's drugs. It's drink. It's smoking. It's things like that. But addiction's a a, a real deal. Um, and it's it's becoming a problem um obviously at the moment in football um and some players will will be addicted and obviously it's around betting on football mm. where the problem lies for them i guess yeah i mean i i i don't mind a little flutter now and again whether it's on the horses or uh, mm. football or whatever um we always used to play cards um yeah but a regular card school both with um blackburn southampton newcastle in- and england um but yeah, I mean, in 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 recent times, I mean, we've seen Ivan Tony and now Tonali at uh, at Newcastle, um, and it's it, it's a problem. Yeah, and I hope I hope well, I really hope that um, they get the help that they need and the support that they need, particularly. I mean, obviously, it depends on the nature of the gambling things, and we're not altogether clear what that is. If you know, if you're betting on football in general, it's against the rules. So I understand that. But um, if you, I suppose if you're betting against your own team, then you've got then that that that's beyond a gambling issue, and that's that's obviously that's fraud. It is made aware to you so many times during the season as a footballer. Is it? Yeah. Because it wasn't back when mm, I. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't when no. we were playing either, um, or when I was playing either. But, but I it think is now. It is. It is now as a footballer. It is. I mean, it's told. You're told so many times, and you are aware that. You just cannot. You cannot. You're not allowed. And 
I mean, every footballer will know that you cannot bet on on any football match, let alone your own. Your own, and it is spelt out to you so many times during the season. My slight issue with with that um, is that that the federations, whether it's the it's the FA mostly or the Premier League, um, and they have those rules, but then they kind of happily take in gambling companies to advertise whether it's on shirts you'll see on the perimeters around the grounds and and that sort of thing and you think well come on um you you need to help not not encourage people to bet then by by doing that um but it, it it's a difficult one and it's it's and i suppose in many ways with it being an addiction do you punish them or do you get them help and it, it, it's it's a difficult problem to solve i suppose okay let's move on a question from ben um, I, I, I'm reading this question we don't normally just do it on individual players and whether they should be the England squad but I think he's got a valid point with this one why isn't Esri concert mm. in the England squad um, I'm wary of tweeting this at half time so he's obviously <laughs> watching the Villa West Ham game um, but he's been excellent again for Villa today and it's far from the first time yet he's never even mentioned as a potential call up he should be in there I think we've we've muted it in on, on match of the day in the past that he was on the perhaps on the periphery. He's got something though, hasn't he? He's got a point. Yeah, what is he how old is he now? Is he twenty five or twenty six, I think he is. Yeah, um, he's probably in his prime. And he's having a he's having a really good season. Um and he was very good yesterday as well. Um I've got him in my team of the week, believe it or not. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if he keeps on performing he 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 won't be ignored. Uh, I don't I, I think that's pretty clear. If he keeps on playing the way he is, then and he's gonna get mentioned. Um so Keep on playing well, and it, it'll it'll be get in there. I think it was just because of I think uh, Tyrone Mings when we mm. go to to Villa, he was the one who would get the plaudits because he was uh, the captain, the leader. Also, left footed, left footed defenders always help within the squad. Can play different positions when building out from the back. Um, but yet, in terms of consistency for what he's done over the last couple of seasons, he definitely. I had the same conversation about Tamori at AC Milan, why we, he was not getting a yeah. sniff, and then he's had a sniff now. So all he can do is keep knocking on the yeah. door. But yes, he should be in the next squad, I think. Question from Carla Start, bench, sack. <laughs> this is the defenders edition. Okay. And she's gone with Kieran Trippier, Gary Neville. Terry Butcher. <laughs> right. I'll go first. There's no way I'm not starting with Terry Butcher because I'm terrified of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Kieran Trippier's probably got a bit more to his game than than Gary Neville, but that's it. That's a tight one. So I'll um I'll go just Kieran Trippier because he's a lot younger. <laughs> Gary Neville, you're sat. <laughs> you need to be careful, Mike. You'll tell him. Yeah, I know. Well, I want to see what Mike's choice is. Yeah. Start Trippier, bench Neville, and unfortunately, Terry won't hear this, so I can see that. <laughs> I'll make sure he does. <laughs> I'm going. Start Trippier. Bench butcher and sat <laughs> What's Gary Neville like? I mean, I've only met him a couple of times in my life. I've seen him. He does a lot of good things and um, he's obviously very smart uh, and an excellent pundit. What's he like as a lad? He's a really... I think it's like anything. So when I first met you two, you have a certain aura about you because you respected within the game. Gary Neville has that as well, even though he's quite self-deprecating when he's talking about um, himself as a player and he could never do this or do that. But he's really intelligent. He's obviously a great pundit because he's really insightful. He studies the game and he's just a all-round nice guy. He's a workaholic, isn't he? He's just yeah. always doing something. He, he can never stop. He's trying to... To change the world and fair play to him. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Mark Sheiky asks, how much sponsored gear did you wear as a player? Did you ever fake the brand because you had your own preference? <laughs> E.g. everyone knows Puma Kings are the best. Other boots are available. <laughs> Umbro was uh, all, all throughout my career. That's all I ever wore from 17 yeah. when I made my debut to 
two, three months before my 36th birthday, 35, mm. I always wore Umbro boots, Umbro Speciali, black ones or black and white ones. Um, and they, some, I mean, it was the boots were great. I used to love the boots. The gear wasn't the best. Some of the tracksuits mm. that I had to wear, oh, I look back now thinking, fucking hell, honestly. But uh, Umbro was always for me, always right throughout Umbro. my career. Umbro! Umbro, Micah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting any free Umbro gear now from now on. Oh, my God. Don't get us, don't get us sued, Micah. <laughs> okay, okay, it was shit. Not shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Umbro, that, this is what I mean about, I don't know, straight laced, Alan yeah. Shearer, prim and proper, Umbro, Ready salted crisps. That's just you to a T, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with ready salted crisps <laughs> if they're walkers. I had a meeting once with Adidas. They wanted to. Uh, they wanted to do, um, to come in and get me out of my uh, out of my contract with Umbro. They offered. I don't know. They offered so much money more than Umbro, but I was just too loyal. I stuck with Umbro. Oh, Adidas boots were great. Al, I used to. I wore those for a, for a long time. Mike, I wore Adidas stand finders all his career, didn't he? <laughs> First row stand finders. Yeah, fantastic. Adidas <laughs> stand um, I was, um, I, yeah, I would Adidas for years. And then towards the end of my career, I switched to um, a, a Quasar. I remember that, yeah. Because I didn't turn down the big open <laughs> asked me to switch. And, and in all honesty, I can say it now because they're no longer, they, they were Micah. <laughs> A bit. <laughs> what um, were the Adidas it, it, ones? Were the World Cup Adidas with the three stripes? Oh, that yeah, yeah, the three. They're beautiful. Well, all Adidas have got three stripes. No, I know, but there was those three white. Was it Adi? I think they were World Cup Copa ones. Mundial, you're yeah, thinking yeah, of yeah, yeah, Copa yeah. Mundial. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I had some of those at the World Cup, and they were the rubbers. But I had the um, the stud version was. The, they were great boots, and then I I got this deal, and um, <laughs> it was taking a bit of time to. To, Gary, um, sorry, sorry what? to stop you, but what? Qua quasar? Qua I thought that. I thought that was a fucking <laughs> crisp as well. Were they not? They were quavers. Quavers. <laughs> They're walkers as well. All oh, oh, right, okay. <laughs> you can mention that. What's? Yeah, well, quasars were. Um, can you remember boots called Patrick? Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Keegan, Keegan, Kevin Keegan, the guy that made Keegan's boots for Patrick, did quasar ah, boots for me. Okay. It, was a, it was a new brand. That sadly is no longer with us. Um, and I, this is this is a true story. I wore them. They done all the money on you, Linegar, didn't they? Yeah, you finished yeah. them off. Well, not quite that. I don't think it was probably the quality of the. But they were a little bit, let's say, heavy. Not quite divers' boots, but not. <laughs> and I wore them the first time, England against Spain, in the Bernabeu, and I scored four goals. Oh. Now, admittedly, two were headers. But in the last 10 minutes of the match, the soul was hanging off. <laughs> <laughs> the soul was hanging off. I mean, and I thought, I can't, I can't say there's a problem with the boots because this is the big launch. This is the first game. Right? <laughs> so I played the last 10 minutes of that game with a, like a floppy soul. <laughs> True story. Which is a bit mad. Yeah. Question here from James Johnson. What is the most embarrassing thing you've had to do for sponsors the questions have been firing today yeah. haven't they right. am i gonna do this come I'm on do it, it gary <laughs> <laughs> do it please <laughs> okay all right here we go this is this was awkward right so we're going back a long time i'm about i don't know about nine about um 21 years old and i've got a sponsored car at leicester city um and it's a Fiat Uno, and it's got my name on the side of the car all over it. Like, Gary Lineker drives Fiat Uno. Bit red car. Um, there's a picture of it somewhere. In fact, um, I'll get producer Harry to find it now. Um, and um, so I had this car, and this is a little bit awkward because I've just remembered that Harry's mother... Um, Yes, is it part of this story? Okay, so so we're driving the car. I've got uh, Michelle. Um, uh, we were then dating, and we we were driving home from somewhere, and we kind of went down a little country lane, you know, and uh, parked up, and just had a little bit of kind of. <laughs> let's see, as as Harry's here, a little bit of a kiss and cuddle. But the fact the fact, Harry, you are one of four children suggests that you know what went on with your mother and I on occasions. So we'd go down this thing and we're just having a little bit of, you know, kissing a cuddle and all that. 
and all that. And um, the car starts steaming up and suddenly get a knock on the window. All right, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the bloody name on the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. No, no, no. Anyway, I'm going to show you. I've got a picture here. That is. There you go. I don't know if you can see it. Amazing. There There's the car lock. Lo the fucking Look windows are still steep. Look at him. Look at his gear. <laughs> <laughs> is that why Harry's middle name is Fiat? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had yeah. one with uh, uh, you probably able to get it as well, Harry. F I think it was Fal Falmers. I think it was. The pr they had me in triple denim, a denim <laughs> triple jacket, denim. denim shirt, and denim jeans. What a c I looked, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with that head, you always look like that, anyway. So. <laughs> uh, Micah? No, there's none. Get off, people. No, I, no one sponsors him. <laughs> Hang on a minute, you're on work. every advert on television nowadays. <laughs> exactly, I still work with my sponsors. I'm not about to chastise them. <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> Was it? Harry's found it. Is it, it. Found Is it, it. Farmer's Harry? Go. Here we go. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, Was it Falmers? Falmers, yes it is. My oh. God, uh, triple that's denim. Brilliant. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll get um, our team to put those pictures up. Um, <laughs> if you listen to the podcast version, you'll see it for yourself on a YouTube, but we'll make sure you, you do on social media. Um, one minute, though, before, before we go, what was the link? I think you have another one, Alan, the lingo. <laughs> what was it? LucasAid? <laughs> LucasAid, yeah, I did LucasAid, yeah. What Delivers fluid and energy fast, so you're always ahead of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That you've remembered it. Oh, what a what a great way to finish um, this um, edition of our questions. And um, well, goodbye from me. Uh, I'm going to, to sit in my fear for a while. <laughs> goodbye from me.